What's going on everybody? It's Rural Wider coming at you with a brand new video and it's been maybe five hours since my Tri Brigade uh, Fire King deck profile or Fire Brigade as I like to shorten it as has gone public and I posted that if I got 50 likes on that video I would upload a combo tutorial and in this five hours you have already smashed that like goal it's at like 58 as of recording this video right now uh, i have no idea how much it'll be at by the time i edit and get a screenshot in or how it'll go when it look goes up tomorrow but with that being said i think y'all have more than earned a uh, actual combo video for this deck i didn't expect it to be that fast honestly so i'm here with the combo tutorial and today i'm going to be showcasing three different combos for you to utilize in case you want to play this deck and there's only three compared to some of my other videos such as like my bird up combo tutorials there's usually almost five in each of those not to mention the breakdown uh but there's only three in this one because a lot of the combos in this deck rely on whatever you have in your hand like you can make it very very flexible just depending on whatever you open and whatever your opponent has and a lot of the combos are just a bit too similar for me to make them like separate different like chunks like a lot of them end on similar things and like only have one or two differences so i'm only going to be showcasing the three bread and butter combos that i've discovered myself but with that being said i'm not gonna waste any more time let's go ahead and get right into my fire brigade combo tutorial for december 2023 so for our first combo we're going to be doing something very very simple it's going to end on a pretty weak quote unquote end board but it gets you a lot of resources in turn and it's very conservative meaning that you can use a lot of other cards in your hand to potentially make it stronger and that combo is going to be ponix plus any beast beast warrior or wing beast and any card in hand i'm just gonna have any three cards in hand though just to simulate a regular opening hand in order to start off this combo i'm going to normal summon the fire king ponix activating its effect to add a fire king spell or trap from the deck to the hand and like usual we're going to be adding fire king sanctuary sanctuary is basically the go-to target for ponix 99 percent of the time if you don't already have it at least if you have it, you can go for something like circle or even sky burn but we're going to be activating this fire king sanctuary whose effect will allow us to immediately place the Fire King Island directly from the deck on activation. Next, we're going to be activating the effect of the Fire King Island, destroying a monster in our hand or field to add a different Fire King monster from our deck to our hand. We're going to be destroying the legendary Fire King Ponix in order to search for the Sacred Fire King Garunix. This is going to trigger the effect of the Sacred Fire King Garunix. Because a fire was destroyed by card effect, we are going to special summon it directly from our hand. This will trigger its effect on summon, making us able to destroy any fire beast, beast warrior, or wing beast from our hand, deck, or face of field, allowing it to gain its attack until the end of the turn. Here's where the archetypes get really, really cool with each other, because here you can destroy Tri Brigade Kit in order to start your Tri Brigade plays. Kit's effect is then, of course, going to trigger, allowing you to send a Tri Brigade card from deck to grave, and what else but Tri Brigade Nerval. Nerval's effect is going to trigger, you're going to add any Tri Brigade monster from your deck to your hand. And here, it's going to add Tri Brigade Harris. This is where having that extra Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast in hand is uh, important, because this is going to let Karras discard it in order to special summon himself, and you can then use Karras' effect, banishing two from your graveyard. It really doesn't matter what two you banish exactly, other than the Ponix. Uh, so if this wrong Bali was like anything else, it doesn't matter, uh, then you can just banish that instead. But it's typically best to just banish the Kit and the Nerval in order to summon your Tri Brigade Bear Brim, the Rampant Rampager. Finally, you're going to link all three of these into the Link 4 summon of Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. And this is, of course, going to trigger the effect of Bear Brim in order to search for your Tri Brigade Revolt, placing any card from your hand onto the bottom of your deck, other than the Revolt, of course, allowing you to set the Revolt and pass turn here. There we go. I marked her with my TapioCards.com Spellstone Counter Dice. Uh, so this end board is nothing really spectacular. Ending on Apo for 3 plus a Revolt is nothing really new for Tri Brigade. I mean, pure Tri Brigade variants basically do this as their bread and butter. But I mean, pure Tri Brigade hasn't really been good since it came out, let's be real. But this isn't all the combo actually gets you. Because remember, during the standby phase, this is going to trigger the effect of Legendary Fire King Ponix. Because we destroyed it off the Fire King Island, it gets to add itself back to the hand, meaning that you get this on top of the two other cards left in your hand, which can be hand traps like this, or it can be things like called by or even extension. And this will be on top of the follow-up that your revolt will get you, 
aka any Tri-Brigade from your deck, typically Tri-Brigade Fractal, which is even stronger in this deck than other Tri-Brigade variants because it is a fire and synergizes with things like Island. Like I said, it's very conservative, but you can easily make it better using other cards in your hand, depending on what you have for extension or depending on what your opponent has. For example, if they try to Imperm Ponyx and you have a Kirin, that can change things up a little bit. But this is overall a very simplified standard combo. So this next combo is going to feel very similar in the opener, but just a slight different in the other card you open is going to be extreme in the sheer power of your end board. Because what if you open Ponyx like before, but the Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast you open happens to be Tri-Brigade Kit. We are playing three copies of her, so this actually isn't very far-fetched. It is a very common occurrence to see both these cards in your hand, and of course the other cards in the rest of our hand. Like I said, this seems very similar, but it's going to have a massive difference in our end board. But like before, we are once again going to start by normal summoning our Fire King Ponyx, triggering its effect to grab, you guessed it, Fire King Sanctuary. Activating our Fire King Sanctuary here, this will place our Fire King Island directly from the deck into the field zone. Activating our Fire King Island though, instead of popping the Ponyx like we did before, we're actually going to be popping the Tri Brigade Kit, but we are still once again adding our Sacred Fire King Garunix. This will allow us to go Chainlink 1 Kit to dump and Chainlink 2 Garunix in order to special summon itself, hitting the board here and dumping what else but our Tri Brigade Nerval. Then we can go at Chain 1 Nerval, Chain 2 Garunix, and, and because we already have access to our Tri Brigade cards, we can actually go more into our Fire King engine by popping a Fire King Avatar Barong. And of course, Nerval will add not Karis this time, but actually Tri Brigade Fractal. This is because we're going to link our Ponyx and our Garunix off into a Tri Brigade Farajit, the Baron Blossom. You can then, of course, activate the effect of Farajit in order to special summon the Fractal directly from your hand. You can then use Fractal here, banishing two from the graveyard, of course, usually being your kit and your Nerval, to special summon our Tri Brigade Bear Brum, the Rampant Rampager. And here, it's actually going to be pretty similar to the last combo in that we're going to take all three of these monsters and link them, of course, into our Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess with three negates on her. This will trigger your Bear Brum, of course. You can also trigger Farajit depending on what else is in your hand in case you want to get something else. Uh, but we are going to grab your Tri Brigade Revolt and place a card from the hand on the bottom of the deck, setting the revolt and passing turn. And you're probably wondering, what's so different about this end board? It is literally the exact same thing that you did last time. But you could not be more wrong, because during the opponent's standby phase, rather than getting our Ponyx back here, we actually get to add any Fire King card from our deck to our hand off of the Fire King Avatar Barong that we popped off our Garunix. This will allow Barong to add our Fire King High Avatar Kirin. Now let's say the turn plays out like normal, we utilize like all of our Apo Negates or whatever, and then we also use our Tri Brigade Revolt, summoning back things like the Nerval and then three targets in Graveyard, linking them all off into our Tri Brigade Shurig. Triggering the effect of Nerval here is very important, so you're going to go one Nerval and two Shurig, and you're going to use Nerval to add your Tri Brigade kit. You can also grab Fractal here, it doesn't really matter, but I just like having the Fractals as targets for Tanky later. Now again, really what makes this more different from the last end board that we made, it's because we can activate our Fire King High Avatar Kirin at any point during the opponent's main phase, destroying the Tri Brigade kit in the hand to special summon itself to your side of the field. This triggers the effect of our Sacred Fire King Garunix in the graveyard because a fire was destroyed, we can special summon it back triggering its effect on summon once again. You can destroy Barong directly from the deck here if you feel like, but I like destroying Fire King Avatar Arvada, who will then trigger to summon back our Fire King Avatar Barong with its effects negated and destroyed during the end phase. And this is where the Fire King engine really gets to shine because at any point after this has happened, if your opponent special summons a monster while you control the Fire King Sanctuary in your two level eights, you can trigger the Fire King Sanctuary to exceed summon using both of them to go into Garunix Eternity Hyong of the Fire Kings. His effect will trigger on summon, destroying every monster on the board, allowing you to pop your Barong, your Shurig, and your Appaloosa, and anything your opponent might have built. This will of course trigger your Shurig here, and you can add any level 1 in this current state from your deck to your hand, uh, at least as long as it's a Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast. Personally, since the deck profile, 
I have added a single copy of DD Crow for this kind of situation, but for most of you following the deck list that I made, you can of course add your legendary Fire King Ponyx. And that's still not all that this combo does for you, because remember, after you draw for turn on your next turn, after your opponent inevitably passes when you dark hole their whole board on their turn, you not only get all of these things currently in your hand at like three cards and the Ponyx in hand, but you destroyed another copy of Barong. Well, technically it's the same copy, but you destroyed it again, meaning you can search for yet another Fire King card of your choosing. And you can add anything here. I mean, if you added a DD Crow last turn instead of Ponyx, you can add Ponyx. You can add a Replacement Island or Sanctuary if they got rid of either of those. You can add the Skyburn, Circle of the Fire Kings, Wrong Bali, anything like that. Anything you want. So, like, say for this example, I'm just going to add the Wrong Bali because I like to use Wrong Bali as a spell and trap negate just in case. You have basically five cards in your hand after doing all of those disruptions and you still haven't even really cracked your extra deck that much. Compared to a deck like Bird Up, which I still really love, and it's still my favorite way to play Tri Brigade, this deck is so much more extra deck, like, resource conservative. Like, you don't have to waste too much stuff just to disrupt your opponent. That's it for combo number two, though. Now let me show you the most explosive combo in the deck. And now, here is where the deck gets really, really scary. So this next combo I'm going to show you is a classic opener for any Tri Brigade variant, no matter which kind you're playing, and is known as one of the most glass cannon combos that you can start with in any of these variants as well, because it can literally get shut down entirely by a single imperm, but god is it worth it. And that opener is Fractal, any Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast, and any three cards in hand, and this time it does actually have to be all three. In Bird Up, this combo can range you from anywhere to like four disruptions, but a bunch of follow-up, or you can just get an absurd like 11 disruptions depending on how you do it. It is really, really nuts. But in this deck, it is genuinely one of the most frightening combos I've seen from any Tri Brigade variant. And it all starts by what else but activating Fractal, using his effect to dump your Tri Brigade Kit, followed by dumping your Tri Brigade Nerval, who will then of course add your Tri Brigade Karis. Karis will then discard the Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast in the hand to special summon itself to the side of the field. Now here is where I, like I said, it gets very glass cannony. If you get hit by an Imperm here, it is so over. But you're going to use your Tri Brigade Karis, banishing all four of your Beast Beast Warrior and Wing Beast in Grave to summon your Tri Brigade Shurig, the Ominous Omen. Now, there's nothing really to banish here. Uh, you're simply just using it for his graveyard effect, because you can then link off the Karis and the Shurig into a Tri Brigade Bear Brum, the Rampant Rampager. This will trigger Shurig to add one of the coolest features of Shurig being in any Tri Brigade variant is how it synergizes with any other archetype you're playing because you're going to use Shurig to add your legendary Fire King Ponyx. Here is where you'll use Bear Brum's effect, discarding two of the three cards in your hand, summoning back either Fractal or Kit. It really doesn't matter. I just like going for Kit just in case I really need it. So I'll summon the Tri Brigade Kit to my side of the field from my Banish Pile. Next, I will activate Kit's effect, banishing the Karis and the Shurig from my graveyard in order to summon a Tri Brigade Farajit, the Baron Blossom. Next, I'm going to activate Farajit's effect here, special summoning the Ponyx from our hand, using his effect to, of course, add our Fire King Sanctuary. We will then activate the Fire King Sanctuary, placing the Fire King Island into our field zone, activating the Fire King Island, destroying the Fire King Ponyx, to add Fire King Grunix, or Sacred Fire King Grunix, I should say, triggering his effect in order to special summon himself to the side of the field, using his effect to destroy our Fire King Avatar Barong. Now here's where things get a little interesting, because we're going to use Kit and Grunix to go into IP Mascarena. This is something that, other than tri like the Tri-Sprite variants, you don't really see on a tri Brigade end board, so that's why it's really nice to see it in a deck like this. Finally, to wrap up our turn at least, we're going to link the Bear Brum and the Farajit off into an Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess. Uh, this time it'll only have two negates, and I'm putting it over here just to just, like not have the glare on it, uh, but you can probably put it over here is probably where you want to put it. And remember to trigger the effect of Bear Brum to add Tri Brigade Revolt and put the third card in your hand on the bottom of the deck. 
So this is the current end board. We had two Appaloosa Gates, an IP Masquerina to get us into Unicorn or preferably SP Little Knight, which I will be using as an example here. I'm going to summon a Unicorn, but I promise it's supposed to be Little Knight. And of course, a tri Brigade Revolt. Again, not really assuming, but during the opponent's standby phase, we have a couple of effects we can activate because we'll not only get our legendary Fire King Ponyx back into our hand, but we'll also get the effect of our Barong that we popped in order to search for, you guessed it, Fire King Avatar Kirin, or High Avatar Kirin. Very important difference. Now, you don't need to do anything in a specific order, unlike the last combo where you needed to at least do your revolt to get access to your sanctuary plays, but I just want to go through and show all of the disruptions that this end board features. Starting off, of course, with our two Appaloosa Negates. That's two monster negates right there that can be really useful against cards like Rescue Ace Turbulence's Summon, or the Hydrant Effect, or even things like Aruha or Sharvara. Of course, we also have IP Mask Arena, which can use it herself and something like the Appaloosa or even the Shurig that we summon, but it just really depends, to go into uh, preferably SP Little Knight, uh, you know, if I had one, uh, but a Unicorn also works depending on if you do the Revolt first, but we're just going to pretend this is a Little Knight, shh, you don't know, uh, and then we can try Brigade Revolt at some point, summoning back any number really, I'm just going to summon all four of my Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast back that I really need, so we're going to summon these four here and link them all off into a Tri-Brigade Shurig. Uh, so actually, we'll have to do this before we do the um, the SP play, sorry. Uh, but basically, you know what I mean. Triggering the effect of the Nerval in order to add the Fractal from our deck to our hand, so we're already at three cards in hand again. And then, of course, we can use our High Avatar Kirin at any point, destroying the Ponix in our hand to special itself, triggering the effect of our Sacred Fire King Garunix for it to hit the board as well, Triggering Garunix effect to destroy our Arvada. Arvada will then, of course, summon back the Barong. And whenever our opponent special summons, we can, of course, turn not those two, turn these two into a Garunix Eternity. And we can also remember to use the effect of SP. Banish not only something on summon, but also banish itself and an opponent's card until the end phase. Uh, but then we can trigger the effect of the Garunix Eternity on summon, destroying every monster except itself. Triggering the effect of our Shurig, we can add our DD Crow here because we have the one banished. Uh, but again, you can also add a Ponix just in case for like a little bit of extra like discard fodder and stuff like that. Really just up to you. But in this situation, we do have DD Crow for an additional disruption. So we had two Apo Negates, SP uh, Little Knight's effects, which are the banished on summon and the banish uh, of two monsters on the field, including itself. We had a non-target banish off of Shurig which led to a DD Crow, or technically Ponix, but I'm going to assume DD Crow because it's just a one-of just to search it. And then we also have a Field Nuke off of Garunix Eternity, which I'll count as one here, but this can technically be anywhere from one to like five disruptions if you count it as that, because it is a board wipe. So bare minimum, that's like seven disruptions, six if you had the Unicorn instead of the uh, SP Little Knight, which is understandable. But then remember, this isn't all, because at next turn, after you draw for turn, you get the effect of your Ponix to add it back because you destroyed it with the Kirin, and you get to search again with Barong, searching into something like Circle of the Fire Kings in case you want to get some more advantage, because Circle of the Fire Kings can say, pop the Garunix Eternity, summon back something from the graveyard like a tri Brigade Kit, trigger the effect of Garunix Eternity to get bare minimum one to two free bodies on board from the grave, including the Garunix uh, that's under it, which can then also get, like, you can basically get an OTK off of just Circle of the Fire Kings here. This isn't part of the combo, I just want to showcase how nuts this is. Here is exactly, you can literally just Circle the Fire Kings, pop Garunix Eternity, and summon back something like, um, let's just go for, I guess just Kit, right? In case you want to use the effect of Kit. This will trigger the effect of not only Garunix Eternity, but also Sacred Fire King Garunix, summon itself back, and then Garunix Eternity can summon back things like Arvada, and, uh, well, technically this is any Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast, so I'm not going to include Wrong Bali there. Uh, but you can also summon back things like the High Avatar Kirin. And this is already almost game on board. All you have to do is like normal summon the Fire King Ponix here. Use its effect to search something like a Skyburn. And if they try to stop you here like a Nibiru, all you have to do is say Arvada, negate, effect of this because it was destroyed. Summon back another thing from Grave like your, um, I, wait, can you summon? Yeah, you can summon the, uh, the Garunix Eternity back and just destroy a card in the field. 
and you can just go for an OTK there. Like, there's really nothing your opponent can do about it. The TLDR is that this deck is insane when it comes to follow-up, and yes, this was a very glass cannon -y combo here, but you can make a lot of almost exactly the same end boards, just with like similar power levels, one or two things missing from it. But basically the idea is that you're disrupting your opponent a lot with your effects and then recurring a lot so that you still have resources on the next turn. And with cards like Runic's Eternity and just all the Fire Kings in general, if they get destroyed by any means, uh, you can usually just float into more things so that your opponent still has to worry, similar to Unchain, just a little bit slower. And that is going to do it for my Fire Brigade combo tutorial for December 2023. Uh, again, very, very fast that this video went up. I really thought it would take at least a couple of days, uh, but y'all are very enthusiastic about this deck and I'm really glad because I think it's a really fun deck and I'm actually going to take it to my first locals with it uh, since the that came out tonight as of this video being recorded. That's going to be fun. I can't wait to have some updates on that. And there probably are, and actually probably most definitely are, better combos you can follow out there, but these are just ones that I came up with completely on my own. I didn't really like utilize any other like content creators' ideas, and I'm very proud of what I've managed to come up with. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on these combos, because that's going to do it for the video. If you liked it, please sure leave a like, as I'll put this video and the channel into your recommended. And if this content you're more like it, like the rest of my combo tutorials and other such videos, then perhaps consider subscribing and turning notifications on because it would support the channel more than anything else and it's absolutely free. Also, want to support me directly while getting some awesome TCG merchandise in the process, check out Tapio cards in the link down below, use code Aurora5 for 5% off your purchase at checkout, and support me financially. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This is Aurora, signing off.